Hi everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a full face of first impressions. So if you'd like to see me apply a full face of new to me makeup, do a wear test, do some check-ins and then share my final thoughts on the products I used, then just keep watching. For skin prep today, I used the Drunk Elephant Hydra B Intensive Hydration Serum and the Sunday Riley Auto Correct Eye Cream. I'm testing out a hydrating primer today. I'm going to give the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Hydrating Primer a go. So I didn't want to go too heavy on the moisturization since I have oily combo skin. This is what the primer looks like. It looks like a lightweight moisturizer, creates a flawless canvas for makeup application and extended wear. Primer for dry skin types, oh dear. I might not enjoy it as much as those people with dry skin might. I've got this far, so I'll give it a go. <laughs> it does have a 4.6 star rating on the Laura Mercier website. So after skincare, gently massage a dime-sized amount onto the skin with fingertips. Feels nice. Feels really silky. So this is obviously a moisturising primer. Hopefully it won't be too much for my combo skin. Slides on nice, giving me a dewy appearance. So paraben free, sulfate free, fragrance free and silicone free. Now, I love a bit of silicone, so I don't necessarily see silicone free as a plus. Infuse moisture into skin with this replenishing hydrating primer that keeps skin feeling fresh all day and maintains the colour integrity of makeup, smooths and locks in hydration while marine botanicals replenish the skin. Good for your makeup, good for your skin. 86% of consumers agree this primer extends the wear of makeup. Considering its primary job is to extend the wear of makeup, I don't think 86% is that great of a statistic. So 14% of people that use this primer thought it didn't work to extend the life of makeup. 91% of people agreed it boosts softness and suppleness. Just as a painter primes a canvas, Laura Mercier believes in priming the skin. This 25 mil size is 17 pounds. Okay, it feels quite tacky. So I'm a little bit worried about how this is going to work with the next product because I'm going to try something quite unique for the base. I am going to try a product from Nude Sticks Tinted Blur Stick. So this is a bit of a unique product. It claims to be a tinted sheer coverage lightweight all over face stick that blurs texture hashtag no filter skin. Okay so I have the shade 2 light. And it seems to be one of those sheer no makeup makeup coverages. Now I'm not sure how much sheer coverage I can get away with. So we'll see how it goes. It claims to provide a sheer tint that blurs imperfections, smooths out tone and texture. Blurring technology softens lines and pores. I like the sound of that. Lightweight, shade adjusting, enhance your natural skin tone rather than masking it. Effortlessly easy to use, these convenient cream to powder sticks give a soft matte glow for the nude sticks look. Simply dot and dab where you need coverage. So you can kind of use this as a primer or a very sheer tint or you could use shades lighter or deeper than your skin to highlight and contour. So quite a versatile product. These are vegan, oil free, they are enriched with cocoa and green tea emollients to also nourish the skin while perfecting it. There are 10 versatile shades, it says these do have kind of skin adaptive technologies. I'm not sure if this is going to be enough coverage for me but let's just dive into it. I'll do a little swatch for you. Okay so I see some pigment, I'm not sure if this is gonna match my skin tone but let's try it so it says kind of dot on I really kind of want to draw this over my whole face but I'll, I'll dot it I wonder how much this color will build because I 
don't know how much this is going to do for me. Okay. So I do feel a bit of that kind of blurring silicone effect that I felt I was missing from the primer. It feels nice. It goes on smooth. The coverage is minimal and I don't have a new concealer to try today so I'm going to try and see how much I can build this up. I'm not going with the dots anymore. I am going to do stripes. The powder I'm going to try does claim to cover spots and lines though so maybe the powder will have to save me. I am not saying this is a bad product at all. Some people just want that kind of sheer coverage. I knew what I was getting it into. Okay. And you know what? It is actually buildable, which is nice. That is giving me a bit more coverage. But it looks natural. I've got a bit of a radiant glow going on. It is starting to pill. I did put my skincare products on hours ago so I will say that primer and this base are not a good combo. I'm going to see if my pre-dampened beauty sponge can save the day. Oh dear. I feel like this product could cling to dry patches. I'm just getting that vibe. So I would recommend exfoliating before using this. Oh dear. You see that pilling around my hairline? Oh, this is not good. Oh, cripes. Yeah. Maybe don't use this product with a hydrating primer. It's not working out well for me. It looks like my face is peeling off, but I'm pretty sure that it's the primer and I use less than a dime sized amount. So yeah, those guys are not a good combo. I'm just going to kind of spot treat areas where I want a little bit more rather than drawing it all over my face again. I think this could be really, really nice for you know, maybe a day at the beach or no makeup days where you don't want to look like you're obviously wearing makeup, but you just want a bit of something. I'm not blown away by the blurring ability, to be totally honest. I don't love this. I think it's just meant for people with better skin than me. I think I might be better using this as a primer rather than a sheer base because it's definitely not friends with that Laura Mercier primer. I dared not put any, any more on. Oh dear. I do see it gives a nice little bit of glow and radiance. I bought this because I really wanted kind of an easy summer base that was lightweight and not like putting sticky liquids on the face but I can already tell this is not it for me. I'll see what other people think though because mine is just one opinion. Yeah it does have a four star rating on the cult beauty website. People like it but they say it's not much coverage and they say it's very small you get 6.1 grams. It's a very small handbag friendly size, but for £28, I get why people feel a little disappointed. I will let you know how it wears, but for me, I'm not loving it. I can already tell that I won't be repurchasing this one. Much, much sheerer base than I would have liked. I'm not going to risk building that up anymore, so I will continue with my makeup application. Next, I have another stick cream product. This is the Clinique Chubby Stick Contour. It just comes in one shade. 
curvy contour seems to be a universal shade so I'm not sure how that's gonna work this is what it looks like there we go it looks quite warm actually I'm not sure how this would work as a contour for deeper skin so please let me know if you've tried this before if you have a different skin tone to mine and how it works for you because it seems quite strange i'm a bit nervous about how this is going to work on top of that cream base but i'll just go for it so i'm just gonna draw on lightly i really don't like that nude sticks base it's definitely going to emphasize any texture that you might have okay let's see how this blends wish me luck oh not very easy to blend to be honest oh i'm not having a good time today am i okay so once that has blended out has it blended out it's quite subtle Not particularly easy to work with. What do you think? It's not melting into the skin at all the way I would want a cream contour to, but I'm committed now. I don't like this, I can already tell. I'm interested in why it's got such an orange kind of tone to it since it's meant to be a contour rather than a bronzer. I like a cool tone for my contour. So once again, I can already tell you it's not a repurchase for me. I'm just going to try and blend a little bit on my neck. Oh dear. I do not repeat not like that product. I'll have a little read up about it to see if I've applied it wrong or if anyone can help me. <laughs> These retail for £21 and you get six grams. A creamy contouring stick which creates the illusion of depth and warmth. I don't want my contour to warm. I want my bronzer to warm. It does have a four star rating on the Clinique website, but only 12 people have reviewed it. It claims to be long wearing and oil free. People are saying it's really easy to use and perfect, but a few people are saying disappointed. So you seem to either love this or love this. And I definitely fall into the love category. I just, there's just much better contours out there. I won't find myself reaching for this. Oh dear. Okay, hopefully I'm gonna have more luck with the blush. So today I'm gonna to try out the Kevin O'Quan Neo Blush in the shade Grapevine. And honestly, I don't usually use a powder blush. This is the packaging. It's a real interesting product because as you can see, there's kind of like a gradient. It goes from light to deep. So the idea, I guess, is that you can kind of pick your own blush. Ooh, it's kind of a um, purpley, mauvey colour. So I'm just going to swirl towards the kind of lighter end. There's a quite a lot of kickback. Tap off my brush. Smile. Mm, very subtle looks to have a nice sheen I'm going to need to build this up gives quite a natural looking flush mm, quite pretty quite soft and pretty I'm going to go one more just to take it to the dull cheeks level I'm a more is more gal. Yeah, it just looks like a natural looking flush. And with that bit of a sheen, 
I don't dislike it as much as I usually do a powder blush. I much prefer a cream blush. But as far as powder blushes go, so far first impressions, I'm liking this one. This one comes in four shades. It comes in the grapevine that I used, pink sand, rose cliff and sunset, which looks to be a corally type colour. It claims to be an innovative blush compact that blends pearl, satin and matte finishes. How interesting for a multi-dimensional look. This richly pigmented lightweight powder blush glides on evenly to skin without streaking to colour, contour and illuminate the cheeks. Each shade features a trio of colours and finishes in a gradient form, allowing for a personalisation of blush that looks natural to a powerful pop of colour. So I must have used the kind of pearlier end. I wonder if this is a matte side. Oh, wow. That's what the deeper end looks like. Really, really unique product. I haven't seen anything like it before. It retails for £28. Buildable and blendable. I'd agree with all the claims and the first thing to the hair that I really, really like. So hopefully that will continue. For highlighter, I'm going to try out the Anastasia Beverly Hills Loose Highlighter in the shade Vegas. <laughs> now, how glitzy does this look? So I'm going to have to go with a light hand since it is the daytime. And I'm about to put a highlighter called Vegas on my face. So I'm just going to pop a little bit into the lid. <laughs> Swirl a highlight brush in. It's picked up a lot of products, so I'm going to tap off deep breath wow now that is a really glittery formula oh gosh oh dear i don't like obvious glitters on my face so i don't know why i'm instinctively putting more on that is a blinging highlight for you glittery guys and gals, as the name would suggest, suitable for wearing in Vegas. Now that is a bit of a blinding golden highlight. I am going to just try and tone it down a little bit by patting this sponge that I used for the base over the top. But that is kind of beaming. I might live to regret this, but I'm going to draw a bit of this nude stick on the top to try and tone it down. Okay, I think that's kind of worked. So yeah, if you want a glittery beaming highlight, I can recommend that one. If you want a subtle highlight, that's not that's not for you. I am on the cusp of looking cakey. I'll take it. I can still see little glitters. I don't like it. I should have read the description more carefully. It is a glittery highlight. I was never going to like it. This is £23 on the ABH website and it is a shimmery loose highlighter powder with an intense payoff. I agree. It has got a 4.6 star rating so if this is your vibe, this is your vibe. It comes in four shades so it comes in Sunset Aura which is a rose gold, Snowflake which is a silver, Vegas radiant gold and peach phase which is a coral gold contains reflective iridescent pearls that deliver an intense sparkly payoff easy to blend formula velvet texture leaves you with a silky glow it's a loose powder version of the abh glow kits that's why i tried it because i really like the glow kits but this one is definitely sparklier the ones in the glow kits are quite smooth and the shimmer is not as obvious so it says it has buildable coverage so you can create everything from subtle luminosity to dramatic high reflect makeup looks. There's nothing subtle about this. <laughs> it is non-comedogenic, safe for use on eye, skin, lips, body and hair. Quite versatile, just not my style, not a bad product at all. Time for eyes and I've heard really good things about these new-ish 
elf mint melt shadows these are the little bite size shadow collections i think i'm going to use this one today that has these kind of more neutral shades in i'm going to use the chocolate mint palette today that's got a few wearable daytime shades i also picked up the mint to be palette which looks exciting but yeah i think you have to be in the mood for a mint eye so i'm gonna use this palette today and i've heard that these are really good quality shadows they're only tiny but what do you expect it's four pounds i'm going to use this kind of camely kind of shade in my crease so i'll dip that brush in and tap off the excess nice amount of pigment seems to be blending I'm going to drag it all over the lid to create a bit of a base colour because I think I'm going to just put a bit of that shimmer over the top. Wow, I can see why this has been so well reviewed. It went on really easy, really blendable. I'll obviously let you know how it wears however first impressions are good that being said i've only tried one shade so i'm just going to dip into this lovely kind of champagne gold sheen with a finger and press this on the center of the lid oh lovely that's really really nice Maybe a little bit too much for day, but I've got that ABH highlighter on, haven't I? So I might as well go all out. I'm going to use that same brush just to make sure it's blended in nice and smooth. Oh dear, I haven't done my other eye yet. Oops. I'm going to go underneath the lower lashes with that same Camely colour. Oh. Probably should have used a skinnier brush. I'm just going to pinch it. I really like what I've done there. This is maybe taking it a bit far for the day, but never mind, I've done it now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and clean this brush that I dipped in the sparkle, cause I wanna use this in my other crease. I'll go do the same thing to this eye off camera and I'll be right back. I'm back with the other eye done. What do you guys think? I'm looking forward to playing with the jazzier green shades, but I'm just going to leave it there today for a daytime eye. And I just think for £4 so far, I'm really impressed. They're so smooth, so blendable. This glitter has kind of travelled. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and clean up with this nude stick. So wish me luck. Just drawing that underneath where I it was with my own finger it was my <laughs> error not the eyeshadow's fault okay and that's worked quite well to just take down that sparkle that I'd got under my eye the sparkle does travel a bit but that's what happens when you're using sparkle I really, really love those little elf palettes so far. Things are looking up. Sticking with the gold theme, I am gonna try the By Terry Precision Waterproof Eyeliner in the shade Festival Gold, because I just thought it'd tie in with that sparkly gold. I'm gonna put that in the waterline. This is £24. 
it has a 4.4 star rating on the by terry website you get 1.2 grams mm, it's not gone in the water line quite as easily or smoothly as i would have liked but it has gone in It's a bit more of a bronzy gold but what I'll do I will draw it along the lash line as well just to try that out for you wow it goes on really smooth to the lash line that's actually really nice I'll put it under the lash line as well because I'm just going for it today with this daytime makeup. <laughs> really going a bit extra. <laughs> so, it's a really good, really good quality liner. It's not dragging. Really intensely pigmented. We expect quality from by Terry, don't we? Okay, I'm not really sure all these elements of my eye look go together that well. So I'm going to kind of smudge in the liner on the top of my lids to try and blend it into that more champagne-y shadow. It doesn't want to move that easily once I put it down so be aware I think I'm just going to add a bit more of that elf shadow on top that gold shade again just so it's not as much of an obvious transition I really like this kind of light champagne gold colour. I mean I know I look like I'm going for a night out. Okay. I think I look a little bit crazy but that's what happens sometimes when you're just trying a load of new makeup instead of makeup that you've kind of put together in your mind strategically from your entire collection. But I don't think it's too bad. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I will do the mascara after powder. So now I'm super duper excited to try out the cult product. This is the Coty Airspun Loose Face Powder that I have seen so many people raving about. Oh gosh, it comes with this glamorous looking face puff. I got the shade Translucent. So I ordered this from iHerb.com. It's a website based in the US that kind of ships worldwide. So this was £5. They do free shipping to the UK if you place an order with them over... £30. I'll link the info in the description. It smells powdery. I know the main ingredient in here is talc. So if you don't like to wear talc on the skin, this isn't the product for you. So I've kind of poured some out into the lid. I don't really want to use this powder puff because I think it might give me very heavy coverage. It does claim to blur wrinkles, spots, so I'm just going to put a really loosely packed brush in, swirl it around. It seems quite creamy. Mm. It's giving me matte, velvety vibes. I think maybe I should have bought one of the tinted shades because I think this translucent powder is actually looking a bit ghost like on me. It smells like fresh and clean. 
Oh, yeah, it does. It smells like talcum powder, which it kind of is. Okay, so it's a matte finish. It looks pretty powdery. However, I wish I'd tried it on a different base. Just going to do a bit more on my forehead. I don't think this is... I don't think this is truly translucent. It's making me look really white. So oh, I'm thinking it probably wouldn't work for deeper skins. It's looking a bit patchy, but you all know I wasn't happy with the base I created. So I'm going to have to play with this more to give it a fair test. I'll experiment a little bit more and let you know my thoughts in the comments. What do you guys think? Not bad, but so far not living up to the hype. Featuring an exclusive micro spun formula where loose powder particles are spun and swirled until they achieve a cloud like softness. This ultra smooth powder hides tiny lines, wrinkles, and blemishes, gives a new softness to your skin. Used to set makeup or as a foundation, that's interesting. So it kind of claims to function as a powder foundation on my skin. It's making me look a bit ghost like, to be honest. You get 65 grams in here. It does have a four and a half star rating on the iHerb website. It's a beauty legacy since 1935. I'm not sure, but people do seem to love it. I'm not really a matte finish lover, so maybe that's why I don't love it. For lips, I'm going with another product I got from the iHerb website. It's the Nivea blackberry tinted lip care hmm. looks nice and sheeny i've seen good things about this on the internet oh it smells fruity as well and it's not available in the uk so while i was importing from america i thought i'd try it let's try it Quite a nice kiss of colour, it's giving like a berry stained effect, it feels comfortable on the lips. It will cling to any little bits of dryness you've got so I'd recommend exfoliating before use. It's got a nice kind of satiny sheen. This one again has a four and a half star rating. It's £3.34 for a two pack. So you can't beat the price. It does have a blackberry scent. It is mineral oil free, dermologically tested. It claims to nourish all day and it is enriched with blackberry extract, shea butter and jojoba oil. Leaves lips soft and smooth with a hint of colour. I can't say I'm in love. It's just a tinted lip balm and the last step today is mascara so again from the iHerb website I imported a tubing mascara this is the heroin make volume control mascara in shade 2 it's from the brand kiss me I love a tubing mascara wow Look at the packaging. It's so pretty. Let's give it a go. Ooh. Very dry formula. But here comes uh, the length. Quite subtle. You can already tell I prefer my Clinique tubing mascara but this is a lot more affordable I think it was around eight pounds quite a subtle look for daytime which is how I like my brown mascaras lashes starting to clump a bit definitely not my favorite worth a try though right Hmm. Do you know I don't have a brow product, so I'm just going to see 
how versatile this is. Use on brows at your own risk. Yeah, I've managed to smudge that a little bit, but I'll be able to wipe it off with a cotton bud once it dries. Wouldn't recommend for brows, but was worth a go. It has a four star rating, £8.40. Ah, you twist the bottom for natural to full volume. Interesting. Okay, so I'm not sure what type of volume I had. I'll turn it up to full volume. I think that might impact the amount of product that goes onto the brush. Uh, yeah, so that has definitely made my lashes fatter and full volume, but it's getting clumpy. I don't love this mascara, despite the cute little packaging with a little key. Mm, I think that's a bit of a gimmick. Yeah, so it's smudge resistant. You just wash it off with warm water. It contains camellia flower oil, rose flower oil, royal jelly and argan oil. So it sounds like it's really good for your lashes. Got a 4.1 star rating. It says use after curling lashes. Hmm. Not sure about this one. I'm just going to go and try and wipe off the mascara I got all over my brows and I'll be right back. I am back and ready to share my initial first thoughts. Now I've got all this makeup on my face. That mascara cleaned off the skin really easily. So I'm not that happy with my look. The base is looking rough. I'll do a quick run through of the products. Okay, this Laura Mercier. Pure Canvas Primer, designed for dry skins, not really meant for me. It was a nice kind of hydrating, cooling feeling. The application was nice. The base did not go on top of it nicely. However, I used a bit of a different base today. So I'll try this with a different foundation products and update you in the description box. This did not give enough coverage it only claims to be a very sheer tint or a kind of tinted primer i didn't love the blurring effect i didn't feel it was that good i felt like this would cling to dry patches and emphasize texture it's a really really tiny little stick so i can already tell i'm not going to repurchase this if you already really have amazing good smooth skin and just want a hint of a tint you might like this one very handbag friendly this clinic contour i did not like it was too warm for me it didn't blend easily would not recommend this kevin aquan blush was really nice it's got that gradient different textures and finishes looks natural i like this and i don't particularly like powder blushes the abh highlighter very blingy a bit too blingy for me but if i'd done my research i would have known what i was in for if you having a glamorous glamorous night out this might be your bag really liked these little elf mint melt palettes however just to be aware the glitter shade has migrated up <laughs> my eyelid since i started wearing it I'll try and blend that in a little bit. It's not that big a deal, but something to be aware of. The shimmers travel. I had a really good experience with this. I'll see how it lasts. But so far for four pounds, I am super duper impressed. This by Terry Eyeliner, Precision Waterproof Eyeliner. I really liked it. It went onto the lash easier than it went in the waterline, but really, really nice and smooth. This Coty Airspun, it's very talky, you know. I'm not quite sure at the moment where it got its fantastic rep from, but I will play with this a bit more with different base products and update you on my thoughts in the description. This tinted lip balm was just, it's nice, it's pretty, it's a tinted lip balm. Feels good on the lips, don't have that much to say about it. 
this mascara, cool as it looks, <laughs> I can already tell it's not my favourite. It's a little bit clumpy, wasn't that easy to apply. The applicator is a bit weird, I think it's a bit gimmicky. So that's my completed look. What do you think about this makeup? Let me know in the comments. I will go about my day and do some check-ins and a wear test to see how this holds up. See you in a little while. I have now been wearing this makeup for around three and a half hours, so I'm here to update you. The base looks pretty much the same as when I applied it. So that combo of the primer and this new stick, despite initially pilling, have stayed pretty well. Plus, of course, the powder. I don't have as much coverage as I would like just because of that nude stick, but the makeup has lasted well. I'm looking a little bit dry and cakey under my eyes, but if you remember, I really, really built this up a lot under there because some of the eyeshadow had migrated. I still have a subtle effect from that contour, but as you know, I didn't really like the application. The blush is still there, it's maybe faded a little bit, but it is still looking quite sheeny and luminous. I can't really see much of the highlight, but then to be fair, I did try to cover it up with that stick. I can see a few little shimmers. The e.l.f. eyeshadow palette has creased a little bit, has faded a little bit, has migrated a little bit. So it won't be replacing any of my higher end shadows, but for what it is, it's not bad for an affordable shadow. It's not terrible. It's not the best though. However, in terms of longevity, this eyeliner, however, it's remained in my waterline and around my lash line. So this is long lasting. Well, lasted at least three hours as per its claim. So I will continue to wear this makeup for longer. The mascara, although I didn't love the application, it hasn't moved. I'm really impressed with this lip balm because I have drunk water and I've eaten some popcorn since I've been away and it has faded, but it's kind of faded really nicely and evenly. I'll see how this reapplies on top. It smells so nice and fruity. Yep, I can layer it without any issues. Really, really, really impressed with that one. And yeah, like I said, the base is looking the same. So this powder does a pretty decent job at setting, even though it makes me a little bit more powdery than I would like. I'm going to keep wearing this makeup for the rest of the day. So I will be back to check in with you towards the end of the evening. I have now been wearing this makeup for almost eight hours. So it's time to share my final thoughts. The base is still mostly intact. I can still see blush. Can't really see much of the contour. The eyeshadow has kind of patched, faded and creased a little bit. And the lip balm is still slightly there. So I'll go through each of the products in turn and share my final thoughts for now with you. So the Laura Mercier Hydrating Primer. I am in the 86% that thought this primer extended makeup wear. It did pill a bit, but I was using a very different complexion product. So I'll wear this with a foundation that I know I love and report back to you in the description. This was a bit of a miss for me. It has kind of caked under their eyes where I built it up a lot, to kind of cover straight eyeshadow. 
it has kind of stayed put it is that kind of blurry powdery type just not enough coverage for me but it is a sheer product however you, you just don't get much it doesn't give a great blur yeah I'm just not in love with this the Clinique contour chubby stick as you know I didn't like can't see much of it on my face doesn't blend easy it's very warm I won't buy this again the Kevin Aquan Neo blush still kind of still on my cheeks still giving a nice sheen I do like this product finally one I like so many different finishes as well so although it is 33 pounds you get a massive pan and a gradient of color and a gradient of finish so very versatile this highlighter i can still see some sparkle and it was just too glam for my tastes but if you're uber glam you might love this one okay so the elf eyeshadow loved it at first it hasn't performed that well the matte shade has actually performed better than the shimmer which is interesting because it's usually the other way around for more affordable eyeshadows i won't grumble for four pounds the by terry liner it is still in my waterline and still in place around my eye so this is a really good quality durable product this powder i didn't love the finish but it has kind of kept my shine in control all day i am gonna now have a little bit of a go with this powder puff at the end of the day and see how it touches up I will say this is a very generous <laughs> size so not the best for traveling i know some people do like to load up a puff and put it in the bag and again although i'm finding that translucent shade a bit ghostly white for me this does come in different shades it has kind of had that refreshing effect for my makeup it's minimized those lines again so yeah you could kind of coat this in powder and put it in a little plastic baggie for touch-ups if you were so inclined i'll see if i can touch up my under eye area which is going to be Creasy and cakey. Yeah. It works really nice for touch ups. So, my feelings about the Coty Airspun powder are kind of mixed. I will play with this more again over a foundation that I know I love. The mascara has stayed in place all day. I just didn't love the initial application and i wouldn't repurchase it but it is just fine and i really love this nivea blackberry lip care it's kind of faded really nicely i still see some color on my lips really 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 impressed with this one with this by terry eyeliner a close second a couple of things are still out to the jury the primer and the powder i also love the blush eyeshadow just okay and this was a bust have you tried any of the products that i use today if so i want to hear all your thoughts down in the comments have i used any of them wrong have you got any tips for me please let me know down below i will catch you in the next video bye